Welcome to Washington Square News. This is Op-Ed Live. I'm joined today by Francisco Navas and Chris, Chris Marco Trigiano. Thank you guys for joining me to talk about the possibility of paying NCAA athletes. So let's start off with NYU. Can you guys kind of talk about the state of athletics at NYU? And then we'll kind of build out to the larger NCAA from there. Okay, Chris? Wants to cover that? Yeah, well, uh, NYU is a Division three school, so we don't give out... Uh, Scholarships, so we don't have the same problems that we've seen uh, historically with Michigan or UConn or some of these schools or uh, the recent un uh, unionization of the football team at Northwestern. Uh, we don't usually, but we don't really see those problems. Um, I mean, I guess we're a Division three school because we don't really fund it as much as some of these other schools. It's um, just 03 percent of our right, budget. Point three yeah. percent of our budget, for rather than like take Duke and it's, you know similar size school, similar endowment. 25 percent. Yeah. So totally different views uh, on this issue. What do you think, Francisco, about uh, state of athletics at NYU? Well, athletics is not very strong. Uh, I saw a number released by the NCAA recently that said that uh, D three schools without football programs, uh, very similar to NYU, um, have increased funding uh, on athletes, uh, something around the twenty five percent mark. Uh, and in the, and that same time, they increase funding for per student uh, about two percent. So, my issue with that is I don't think that people well, because NYU is a tuition dependent school. I don't think that that will bring any money like business into the model, school. Yeah. yeah, it's a bad business business model to increase sports where it's not going to do anything. It's not going to bring any more students. Thus, it's not going to bring any more tuition. So we're just wasting money on entertainment, really, when we could be using that money for education. Okay, so let's bring this out to the larger NCAA. So, last week, Shabazz Napier, UConn's guard, said that he went to bed some nights hungry. And he's UConn's star. I mean, I imagine he's brought the school millions of dollars. So, but, but since then, since then, the NCAA has approved a proposal that would expand meal coverage for athletes. So, like, what do you think about that? Shabazz's comments and the NCAA's response? And, I mean, it's, it's a big issue. and It's been going on for a long time. I think that's a fair response, yeah. Can't have, you can't have that where a player who, again, has made, I think, tens, hundreds of millions of dollars for this school. They, they just won the national championship. Um, and you can't have your star player going to bed hungry. I mean, and this isn't the first we've heard of this, right? So you go back to uh, the very famous case of the Michigan Fab Five. And these players were from the inner city. They were poor. Uh, same story. They would go to bed hungry. And they had a guy come in um, named Ed Martin who, in exchange for future considerations, gave them some money to get clothes, get food, whatever. And these players were sanctioned after that, especially uh, Chris Weber, who was banned from the school until yeah. just recently. So, I, I mean, I think that's unacceptable. But the response from the NCAA here, uh, you know, I approve of that. What about you? Well, I think it's a good response in the sense that everyone deserves to eat. No one should go hungry, of course. But... I think the another problem with that is that if you give D one uh, athletes uh, free food, then you got to give D two athletes free, free food, D three athletes free food, and then when it comes to that, athletes are supposed to be students. So in the end, you should got to give everyone free food. So what do you propose as the solution to the NCAA athlete compensation dilemma? Well, we we know we have very different views on yeah, this. Go ahead, yes, we do. Uh, well, I think start mine's this, yeah. probably a little bit less radical. Um, <laughs> If, okay, so I think we're heading in the direction of paying student athletes. That's that's the way we're going. That's what the kind of Northwestern right. unionization kind of signal. Whether you like it or not, um, but that's a slippery slope, right? So you can't have a player like Johnny Manziel making ten million dollars while some other player, backup player, makes you know ten thousand dollars, right? So what I would say is, if it's going to go that way, you really have to give them a baseline. So everybody gets ten thousand dollars. That's a made up number. Even, even the even the best players, even Shabazz would even, make ten thousand dollars. Even, even the best okay. players, everybody makes the same just enough so they can afford to eat, right? And it kind of takes the sting off the fact that they're making this you know, these schools, you know, like Duke, like UConn, like Texas, hundreds of millions of dollars and are getting a scholarship, which is which is fine, but it, it we've been we've been told that that's enough for a while now, and it's really not. 
So that was your solution. Yeah. Uh, well, so my issue with it is uh, uh, you're supposed to be student athlete, and I don't think either uh, they don't they don't go together. They're not symbiotic. You can't be a student and a, and a full time athlete at the same time. Um, so my idea is, I think schools should uh, separate completely from their athletics. Um, you could have in NYU's. Uh, in, uh, for NYU, for example, it would be uh, NYU Athletics Bobcats, something like that. And then they should be self-sustaining. Uh, athletes could go through NYU to get to the, to the NBA, to the N NFL, whatever it is, MLB, um, and train there, uh, be paid by that organization. So they're not students, they're just full-time they're athletes. athletes. They're not getting degrees, With they're them. not getting scholarships, they're getting paid to compete in the name of NYU. So as a student, you can still go to NYU basketball games, but really they're just professional athletes. Okay. And um, so a lot of people will say this is unfair. Uh, what if those guys aren't, won't be educated, they won't sure. go to college, you know? But I mean, everywhere else in the world, if you're an athlete, you're an athlete. If you're a student, you're a student. Like you can't, you can't do both. So I mean, I think that's a sign of what the right direction is. So like, so like say that person who is just a full-time athlete, they can pay for their education. I mean, they can still be a student at NYU, but they would pay... If they got into NYU, if they got accepted and, and if separately. they got accepted to the sports, it's two separate things. Okay, yeah. that's an interesting potential solution. So, what, I mean, uh, what do you think of the unionization at Northwestern? Do you think that's a good move? Well, I think it's the, re the direction we've been going, as I said, for a while now. I mean, it doesn't really mean that they're going to get paid right away. This is, this is going to be a process that might take 10, 20, 30 years, you don't know. Um, it's been in the public consciousness and it's now re-entered the public consciousness just because of that. Um, and also it's a preliminary result of just some local yeah. district judge, so it's not official yet, but I think, it's, I think it's the right direction. I think there should be more compensation for these guys. I think it, it's not right that, as I said, making, these schools are making hundreds of millions of dollars and basically giving these students nothing. It'll be an interesting story to follow. It's kind of an ongoing struggle. Yeah. Thank you Absolutely. for joining me. No problem.